all loose. Okay, I'm using a 13 millimeter wrench. Okay, next I have to pry this thing here. Okay. So, yeah. Also, don't forget this uh, uh, this uh, torque wrench here. I'm using a uh, a T40 okay now it's time to uh, use the uh, special tool to uh, compress this uh, cylinder so uh, let me show you how I do it this thing is all bent now because some people uh, didn't uh, really at first probably didn't know how to use it so uh, I'm gonna actually show you how to use it to uh, don't make a mistake to uh, keep bending this handle here okay <clears throat> first I have to put this uh, this thing in here all right just like that and then uh, Find the uh, right flange to uh, to fit to your uh, cylinder, and I found this one that this is the uh, the size that I need. So uh, this is how I do it. I usually this is a this is a magnetic uh, flange here that you can actually just put it on here, and then it's not gonna move. You know, it will fall, but you know, it, at least it's gonna stay there just for a little bit. So uh, what I usually do, I actually take one of this screw here because when you it's a little bit tight to uh, compress this one here. So what I usually do, I, I put this little bit of bolt in here and mount it on uh, one of the mounting uh, uh, hole here. this uh, so you won't damage this here if you uh, accidentally pull this uh. there it is once again I'm gonna use the uh, 13 millimeter just kind of tie it so it will stay there To see what I'm doing here. See that little pin up out here? I just make sure it's uh, shoot it there. And then, okay, this is where most of the people make a mistake. They tighten this so tight. They tighten this so tight. Now, when they're trying to uh, turn this to compress this here, it won't turn because this thing is so tight already. So, what I would do, I would tighten it, hand tight it, and then kind of lose it maybe, maybe one, one turn, maybe uh, half a turn. Okay.
and see if I see if I can do it. Just this. <clears throat> Can't turn it, so I have to uh, use this thing. Falls off the the groove there. I'm gonna tighten this a little bit more. Turning, see how see how easy that thing turns. So actually, if uh, if the handle is nice and straight, I should be able to uh, do this without this wrench here. Other than otherwise, you know, it, well, it should cooperate with you. this up there we go all right <clears throat> this is really handy here all right I got that thing compressed there well, I can Now it's time to remove the housing. I'm gonna move the uh, camera around so you guys can see what's uh, what's happening in the back there. All right. Okay, those uh, those bolts there, those bolts there takes uh, 15 millimeters. Uh, this one here. Okay. Okay. Usually this thing is really, really tight because they uh, they put an anti seize on that <coughs> on this bolt here, so it's gonna be tight almost all the way out. So don't don't be discouraged if this is really tight. It's not gonna break. But this one is really nice and loose. See how kind of blue is on here. Okay. Oh, it's, it's tight all the way. Now it's time to uh, remove this uh, rotor and this is really tight so you need uh, some kind of uh, pry bar to uh, pull this, push this out this way here, okay, Let's see if I can do it right away. So I'll just uh, put the pry bar, 
some more here. It's not gonna damage anything. There you go. It didn't fall. Good. Now I got this out. Oh, here it is. I'm gonna ask the uh, store if they can turn this for me. I hope I can turn it so I don't have to spend any money. Uh, usually here, uh, only $10 to turn this rotor. So it's gonna cost me $10 each rotor to turn it versus buying a new one for uh, what, 75 bucks each here local. Maybe you can buy uh, buy one online for a much cheaper price, but uh, oh, I gotta fix this right away. All right, here's the brake pads. All right, just kinda wiggle this thing out, out of here. Maybe kind of tap it up, there it is. All right, there it is. The front one is still good, but the back one is almost almost wore down almost to nothing see still lucky that uh, i didn't hit the uh the metal i'm surprised that uh my uh, brake lights uh it's not indicating that uh i need a new uh, new brakes all right that's how okay i got, just got back from the <coughs> local store and they are able to uh, turn the uh, my rotor for me see they just uh, they just barely clean up the uh, other side which is good enough for me and, uh, and I'll put it back on ready <coughs> just want to make sure this side is clean this up with the wire brush here now it's time to uh, put the housing back on there <laughs> 
I'm going to move the camera so you guys can actually see how I did it. So it's, it's almost the same thing as you uh, you took it off. As I took it off here. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Again, here's the bolt. It is a 15 millimeter bolt. in there. All right, almost done with it. I'm no mechanic. I just, uh, I just like doing this, and I just don't like to pay uh, expensive mechanics. So uh, I can do this for almost a fraction of the price that you pay for a shop. So. Okay, I pay uh, $49 for the new brake pads and I thought I only pay I only have to pay $10 for the uh, the turning uh, they told me that they increased the price so I had to pay 20 bucks for the uh, turn uh, turning the rotor so uh, so twenty dollars each so that's forty dollars so and a forty forty nine dollars for the brake pad so for uh, eight eighty nine dollars and i can change the i have a, a new new brake system here okay i'm ready to put the wheel back on here and uh in here this tire is so heavy so it will be hard for me to actually lift this up and try to uh, uh, mount this on the on the bolt. So what I use, what I do, I just sit down on a on a little chair here, and then I use my my feet to lift up the tire a little. Actually, just lift up the tire, and then once I got it. In. Put the bolt there, the nut, and I'll set. I can actually use my feet to actually just, uh, you know, make it 
line up pretty good and while I'm tightening the nut. And there it is. This is how you change the brakes on an Ford Explorer 4x4 XLT. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.